smartphone show, a search for a smartphone for every man. I pitched the Nokia N73 with a great camera against the QTEC 8500, aka the HTC Star Trek. Which one's going to win? Also, I look at essential software and tips for your Nokia S63 edition smartphone. I've covered quite a few specialist smartphones in the last few shows with the likes of the Nokia E90 looking to replace a laptop, for example. But what about the opposite end of the smartphone spectrum? What about a smartphone for every man? Taking examples from the S60 and Windows mobile worlds, exactly matched in terms of price, free with an average Vodafone Anytime 200 contract, matched in size and age, about nine months, and both aimed at the man in the high street more than the geek in the office. I'm going to pitch the Nokia N73 with the QTEC 8500, better known as the HTC Star Trek. You'll never guess why. Beam me up, Scotty. The N73's main claim to fame is the inclusion of a seriously impressive camera. While the Star Trek's attraction is more cosmetic, it's a real looker. But which everyman smartphone will win out? S60 or Windows Mobile? Nokia or HTC? Stroke QTEC. Let's see. It has to be said, and I'm normally a fan of most things Nokia produce. But the N73, even in its black incarnation here, isn't the prettiest thing to look at. It's more a, a brutal monolith than a mobile masterpiece. In contrast, the Star Trek is definitely pretty in pink, or black or silver, depending on which one you buy, with its slim and sleek curved lines when closed and a stunningly tactile and space-aged etched keypad when opened. Tellingly, the Star Trek is also one centimetre shorter than the N73 and several millimetres thinner. So it wins in every way. Double checking my own impressions though, I picked a young contact of mine at random and gave them five minutes with each device. I'd probably choose this phone, Steve, because it's the most sleek and high tech and with this one the keys are really tiny and it's very hard to use, but with this one it's on a sheet of metal which looks really cool. I couldn't have said it better myself. Nine points to the Star Trek, a disappointing six to the N73. Indoors, at least, the main displays of both smartphones were gorgeous. Both Windows Mobile and S60 can, of course, be easily skinned or themed, so take the colour schemes here with a pinch of salt. The 2.4-inch screen on the N73 edges it ahead, and then the Star Trek moves back level and then inches ahead itself by virtue of having a second exterior screen armed with a choice of clocks. This one's my favourite. With so many people now ditching standalone watches in favour of using their phones, having a good and instantly accessible clock is a really nice feature. Sadly, the Star Trek screen is a lot more reflected than the N73's, and in bright sunlight I struggle to read it at all, leaving the two devices level at the end of the day. So, nine points each. There not being much to split the Star Trek and N73 on call quality, it was onto messaging, i.e. SMS text and email handling. Here again I found messaging to have its quirks on both devices and just as usable once you got used to the menu functions and shortcuts. In an attempt to split the two I thus looked at the ease of entering text on each keypad. The N73 has proper discrete buttons and I prefer S60's predictive text but, and it's a big but, the keys are really, really tiny and fiddly. The penalty for the large display. In contrast, the Star Trek's clamshell form factor gives it the luxury of far more space. And even though the keypad is all one piece of etched metal, the feel is just as good and text entry speeds are definitely higher. Seven points to the N73, but eight to the Star Trek. With all the hardware controls you need, the Star Trek really should shine when it comes to music playback. Now, Media Player on Windows Mobile and Music Player on S60, plus the actual playback quality, are pretty much identical these days, leaving just the hardware differences. Now, the external display on the Star Trek does work very well, and I love the shiny back, play and forward buttons, but the volume controls on the side were very fiddly and hard to find. And I absolutely hated the fact that the stereo headset is hardwired to a non-standard HTC and very fiddly flat USB connector with no way to use your own headphones. And I also hated the way you have to power the Star Trek off in order to swap the micro SD card over. The N73 boasts a dedicated media key 
hear hardwired to music player on this, the music edition that Nokia PR sent over, making getting to your music quite fast. Um, the absence of hard buttons for music control is partly made up for by the fact that the Popport stereo headset has a control halfway along its length for taking voice calls as well as track and volume control of music. In perhaps the clinching feature, the control box has a socket for a standard, box standard 3.5mm headphone connector. Very nice. Pros and cons all round on the music front and with video playback much of a muchness as well. On reflection, I'm going to split the scores, 8 points each. This is the one category that's completely and utterly dominated by the N73, with a 3.2 megapixel camera with Carl Zeiss optics and proper autofocus and flash. The 1.3 megapixel camera in the Star Trek is revealed for what it is, good for casual snaps and not a lot else. The N73, on the other hand, in good conditions, can rival the output from a standalone digital camera. Its pictures are oversaturated in bright sunlight, but that's about the only black mark I can find against it. Nokia lead the rest of the smartphone world by some margin in terms of camera quality. Hey, I shoot this video podcast on a Nokia smartphone. And the N73 is another great example of why. Its video capture is also respectable and usable at four times typical MMS resolution. Nine points to the N73 and I'm afraid Amiga 3 for the Star Trek. Although both devices have everything needed for the casual user from messaging to contacts to calendar and web browsing, and not forgetting music playback and photography. The Star Trek sits right at the bottom of the Windows mobile tree and it shows with no notes application and no email attachment viewers. With S60's application set being standard across all devices, the mass market N73 inherits notes, quick office viewers, a PDF viewer, a units converter and life blog, among many others. There's also some relatively powerful image editing for your three megapixel stills. There's even an FM radio. But I don't want to knock the Star Trek down too heavily over applications. After all, it's not marketed for convergence freaks. Still, the N73 has to have the edge, with 8 points versus 6 for the Star Trek. You might have surmised from my background in the Symbian world that I'd be bound to score the N73 as the winner here, but I've tried hard to be both objective and impartial. And to be fair, the Star Trek, aka the QTEC 8500, among others, put up a heck of a fight with its clean and elegant lines. But there's just ultimately just too much punch behind the Nokia N73 with the high spec camera, the wider application set, both genuinely usable, even by beginners just starting out with smartphones. With a total of 47 against the QTEX 43, I declare the Nokia N73 the winner. So you've got yourself a shiny new S60 third edition smartphone. Here are a few musts to check out. And don't worry, no money need change hands. If you hate the default key-click beeping sound as much as me, head for Tools, Profiles and select General, choosing Personalise on the menu, and then turning keypad tones off. Phew, no more beeping. Ditto for any other profiles you might use. Move the apps in the main menu system around. Nokia tends to decide on a particular grouping of application icons and folders on each device's menu, but I've found my own preferred order and grouping I tend to stick to it to save my memory and for extra quick access using the keypad quick launch shortcuts, you know, one, two, three, and so on. Experiment. Nokia's web browser has its fans and its detractors, while its services browser only really has detractors, but both of them work by downloading the entire source code of any web pages you want to look at, JavaScript included. For many sites, this means over 100 kilobytes of download for every single page, which takes ages to download and render, and more importantly, means your GPRS costs spiral. So, experiment with the free Opera Mini Java-based browser instead. This uses a special proxy server on a fast machine at Opera's HQ to grab each entire page and then rip out only the bits that are relevant to display on a phone. It compresses the result and then squirts the small resulting file down via GPRS, giving up to 50 to 1 bandwidth savings when compared to raw web browsing. Hugely impressive and with real-world savings to your wallet. Never mind buying extra software, there are plenty of freeware utilities that I consider essential to any S60 3rd edition device. Y Browser, a file manager and viewer. Calcium, a calculator replacement. Mobile Search, Nokia's tool to search for text in any application or file, or indeed in a number of directories on the internet. Maps, aka Smart2Go, covered previously. 
and Moby Pocket Reader for handling text, ebooks, and a lot more. All highly recommended and free. Finally, set up a bookmark to Bloglines Mobile in whichever web browser you choose to use. Bloglines is the best known RSS aggregator in the world, i.e. a website that checks all your favourite news sites and presents their latest stories all in one place. It's a great way to stay completely up to date with the rest of the world almost instantly and with very little GPRS bandwidth needed. Let me know how you get on.